Okay, we're going to continue to look at functions. We're going to talk about two types of functions to begin with here, even functions and odd functions. So we have even functions. Even functions are symmetrical about the y-axis. So, so if I draw in my y-axis, each side should be the mirror image of the other one. And you can see that here on these top two. Now notice, we would have this point here correlates and reflects to this one here. Notice the y's are the same, but the x's are opposite. No matter what point you tr try when you're dealing with an even function, your y's are the same, your x's are the opposite. So in other words, that's what we're saying here. It's an even function if your y's are the same and your x's are opposites. Down below, when we are looking at an odd function, an odd function is symmetrical about the origin. So if I put in the origin here, which you guys should be familiar with, if I take and rotate what's on the upper right here, 180 degrees about that point, it should end up here. Or if I take what's over here on the right, rotated 180 degrees about the origin, I should end up with this, which I end up doing. Now, if we look at a point here, uh, let's see. You'll see if we try this point here, that correlates to this point here. So here, our 2 is positive. Here, it went to a, the opposite of that. Here, we had 8, and it went to the opposite of that. And you can even see that over here. This point here, which is 2 over and 3 down, goes to this point here that's 2 over and 3 up. So what we had as your x is its opposite over here. What was your y here corresponds to the opposite here. So if we have a point x, y that we plug in, it's going to go to the opposite of the x and opposite of the y. For the most part, when you're trying to see if functions are even or odd, you can look at the graph, but if you're only looking at the function itself, like this down here, without the graph, in each case, you plug in negative x. If it simplifies to the original function, then it's even. And that's what we're saying here. Y is your original. If it simplifies to the opposite of your original function, then it's odd. And that's what we're saying here with the opposite of y. So if we want to see if this is even or odd, you got to plug in negative x. Plug in negative x for all your input. So... We're going to go 2 times your input, which is negative x, to the fifth, minus 7 times your input, which, input, which is negative x, and then 4 times your input. Here we have a negative raised to an odd power, which is negative, and a negative to an odd power, which is negative, times a negative in front, which is positive, and a negative times a positive, which is a negative. Now, this does not match exactly with what we had to begin with. If it had, then it would be even, but it's not the exact same as what we started out with, so it's not even. But you will notice that what we have right here is the exact opposite of what we started out with, meaning all the signs are flipped. So that means it is odd. So once again, to decide if it's odd or even, plug in a negative x and simplify. If it simplifies to be identical to what you started out with, it's even. If it simplifies to be the exact opposite of what you started out with, then it's odd. If it's neither one of those, then it's neither. So if I had my original function, which is a parabola of vertex at 0, 0, opening up on each side, if I added 2 to that, that would just move my graph up two. Or if I subtracted two, that would move my whole graph down two. But if I added two in the parentheses with my x before I did my squaring, that would actually move it left two. And you could double check that by graphing all of these. Graphing the original, then graphing each one of these. If you do that here, you can see that when you subtract 2 from your x before you do your squaring, that moves it right 2. Here, these two, the first two, were doing things after I did my function of squaring. Then it goes up and down and affects the y. 
Here I was doing stuff before I did my squaring. It's hanging out with the X, so I get a B in the X direction, which is moving left and right. Here, I'm doing something after I do my squaring, and I'm just doubling all the outputs. So that's really a vertical stretch of two. Here, I'm doing something after I do my squaring. So I'll really, I'm taking everything I initially had and just multiplying it by a half. So that's a vertical stretch of a half. Here, I'm doing something to my x before I do my squaring, so it's going to affect my x. So it's going to be, in this case, a horizontal stretch of one half. This one, doing something with x, it's a horizontal stretch of two. So on these first, so with these four over here, I was always doing my function and then doing something after I did the squaring. These four all went and affected the y's, the output. Plus 2 went up 2. Minus 2 went down 2. Timesing by 2, vertical stretch of 2. Timesing by a half, a vertical stretch of a half. It did what you expected. However, for these four on the right, it's all hanging out with the x before you do anything. So then it's horizontal. It's kind of the opposite of what you would think. You'd think plus 2 would be to the right, but it's the opposite of that. you think minus 2, that would be the left, but it's the opposite of that. Timesing by 2, you would think, might be doubling it, but it's taking half, or same over here. So if it's hanging out with the x, it does its horizontal, and it's kind of the opposite of what you would think. If it's hanging out outside like these over here, it does what you would initially think. So, take a look at this graph over here. Just some basic parabola. If I said x plus 2, and putting that into my function, in other words, it's hanging out with the x, so we know it's going to affect the x, which is horizontal. Because it's plus 2, that means it would just move my graph two units to the left. When I look f of x minus 3, that's not hanging out with my function inside my function it's hanging out afterwards so it's going to do what you would expect and move it up and down and it would move it down three here this two is hanging out outside of my function so it's going to affect the y and do what you expect and multiply it all by two so it would be a vertical stretch of two making it twice as high so you would not affect your x but it would double all the y values so this one here would be moved straight up here this one here would be 0, 4, move straight up to 0, 8, because you got to double the y values. This one here, you're hanging out with the x, so you know it's going to affect x. And remember, it kind of does the opposite of that, so it's going to make it twice as wide. So in other words, you're not going to change any of your y values, but you will be doubling your x values. So this point here, which is initially 3 to the right up 1, it's going to double your x and be 6 to the right, still at the same height of 1. Another question related to this. Here you have this point, and you're asked to do this. Notice you have nothing hanging out with the x. So your x is not going to change. Your x is still going to stay what you had of 3. However, you have this 2 hanging out outside of your function, so you know that's going to affect your y. Also, you have this plus 4 hanging out, so you know that that's going to affect your y. So that 2 is timesing, so it's going to double all your y values. That 4 is being added to all your y values. So we need to go ahead and double our y value, and then add 4, so then we get 2. So this is your greatest integer function, referred to as your step function. It looks like a series of steps if you would graph it. And you could go ahead and use your calculator, go to y equals, then you want to hit math, arrow over to num, and select int, and then put in x. If you hit graph that, graph that you would see a series of horizontal segments that look like a series of steps. So my question for you is not so much the greatest integer function but how does what we have here differ compared to what we start out out with well you should realize 
that that two in front is on the outside, so it's going to be a vertical stretch of two. Then this is hanging out with the X, so it's going to affect the X, so it's going to go three to the right. This is hanging out after our function, after the square bracket, so we know it's going to affect the Y's, and it's going to be one up. Now we'll look at piecewise functions. A piecewise function has two or more pieces right here. I like to make a piecewise function um, t-chart. So I'm going to look at the top one. I can only choose numbers that are negative 2 and smaller. So I'm going to choose negative 2, negative 3, negative 4, and it will continue on after that. So I'm going to take negative 2, plug it into my rule, and subtract 3. Plug negative 3 into that rule and subtract 3. Plug negative 4 into that rule, subtract 3, and I get these. So I would plot these points, 2 to the left, 5 down. If I plot these, 2 to the left, 5 down. Whoops, sorry. 2 to the left, ah. Eh. 2 to the left, 5 down. 3 to the left, 6 down. 4 to the left, 7 down. I get these points. Now, because there is an equal to here, that means I'm going to include this point. So I'm going to go ahead and graph that, and you can see I would get this. Because it goes on forever to the left of 2, I need to have an arrow here. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the center one. The center one starts at negative 2 and goes to 1. So I'm going to go negative 2, negative 1, 0, positive 1. <clears throat> so now i got to take each one of these numbers and plug them into here. Negative 2 squared, do the opposite of that, so I get negative 4. Plug in negative 1, negative 1 squared, do the opposite of that. Plug in 0 and plug in 1. Then I'm going to go ahead and plot those points. However, keep in mind that there's no equal to here, so these are points are not included. They're going to be open circles when we graph these, because these have no equal signs by them. Where this one up here had an equal sign, so that was going to be a filled in point. So plotting these points, I'm going to have an open circle here, left one, down one, zero, zero, and this point down here will be my open circle. And then I can go ahead and do a t-chart also for this bottom one, which says I got to start at one and choose ones that are larger than one. So take one, plug it in, take two, plug it in, take three, plug it in, and then it really continues on in each or in that same direction. So there's really a dot, dot, dot here. Now, at 1, because there is an equal sign, I know that this is going to be a filled in circle. So I'll go to that first point, 1 over, up 3, next one, 2, 2, next one, 3, 1, and then I know it continues on in that direction. So I'm going to have an arrow there. And then I can go ahead and draw in that line. So that's how you would graph a piecewise function.